crumbling. <laughs> Oh, hello there. I'm left wing. You can probably tell from the cultural Marxism coming out of my face. Also, I work at the state funded ABC, so we have to do this every morning. As a left winger, I'm not particularly fond of the alt right. Can't quite put my finger on it, but there's just something about online misogyny and the push for a pan national white empire that ugh, just rubs me the wrong way. To be white is to be a striver a crusader, an explorer, and a conqueror. Despite questionable attitudes to ethnic minorities, alt-right videos keep breaking out all over the internet's face, a bit like racist herpes. They weren't always big-name public speakers and internet rock stars. They first started out in a weird petri dish of rebelliousness, irony, and trolling, often found in places like 4chan. And if you don't know what 4chan is, I've got some here in a jar. That's right! It's just a typical online forum! The alt-right have somehow gone mainstream, gaining a rock and roll, anti-establishment vibe. But there's nothing very rock and roll about a bunch of white men hating multiculturalism. I don't remember Rage Against the Machines singing about the Jew problem or John Lennon's moving tribute to the white ethnostate. But let's not waste too much time pointing out that these pantomime villains are bad. The more interesting question is who is to blame for making neo-Nazis look like the new rock and roll punk? And the answer is unfortunately, partly, us. Don't get me wrong, I love left-wing values and hope that one day they'll win out across the globe. It's just that on that day, I don't want any actual left-wing people to be alive to see it happen. Why? Because we're fucking useless. I mean, first of all, Brexit. What the fuck happened there? Well, uh, the left employed a cunning two-prong uh, strategy by one, uh, calling every Leave voter a racist, and two, uh, failing to put forward a positive case uh, for Remain. Uh, right. Weird how not engaging 17 million Brits and slacking them off instead didn't win them over, but at least yelling RACIST online made us feel good about ourselves and had no bad, long-lasting side effects. The UK has voted to leave the European Union. Ah, shit. Well, don't worry. After Brexit, we learnt our lesson. And then the US election came along and we thought, nah, let's just do that again. You could put half of Trump's supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. Not surprisingly, the left's campaign of vote for us, you pieces of shit, didn't pan out so well. Ah, oh, I don't know what I said, ah! Oh. But don't worry, it's not just the big battles. The left are totally useless on a small scale as well. This is largely thanks to the foul brick of nightmares we all have sewn into our hands, which means we're also bleeding woke all the time that we find something new to be offended by every few seconds. Just for example, the movie Dunkirk is sexist, using the word wife is offensive, this cute kid is a massive racist, doctor saying your weight isn't healthy is fat shaming, Halloween costumes are a microaggression, Mark Twain is racist, in fairness, he is 183 years old, we should have seen it coming, and practicing yoga is cultural genocide. Again, not quite the big picture issues the left used to be famous for. Look, the war in Vietnam's bad, but it's people trying to boost their core strength that's got me worried, you know. But don't try and point out that identity fueled online call-out culture is a worse idea than scrotum-flavoured chewing gum. If you criticise the left, apparently that means you stand against everything they stand for. In other words, you're a worse Nazi than a human centipede made entirely of Hitler's. All this makes the left about as open to dialogue and self-reflection as Gordon Ramsay on a meth spree. Fuck it, look at me, look at me eyes! Not as pissed as I am! You fucking are! To find out more about why this new outraged left is losing ground, and because I know this video is going to get backlash and I want someone else to share the blame, I sat down with moral philosopher and future doxing victim, Dr. Tim Dean. We're in an interview where we're going to constructively criticize the left. Um, why have I filled my pants? Well, it's the case these days that a lot of people on the left see any kind of criticism of their methods uh, as a criticism of their goals. And that makes the kind of discourse and the dialogue that we're having um, really uh, aggressive and quite corrosive as well. So why didn't calling Trump supporters racist and sexist help the Democrats win the election? I think that if you call a bunch of people sexist or racist but they don't believe that they are sexist or racist, um, all it's going to do is get them to rally around their own tribe and gather together and fight back. And that's exactly what we saw. I mean, how would you feel if I said you're entrenched in white privilege? I was going to raise that, actually, because we are two, two white men. White. I'm white, yeah. yeah. I'm not a racist? No, no, no neither am I. Okay. 
So this is fine. Well, we're just having a rational conversation. Okay, good. You got that? This is fine. Traditionally, the left were in favor of things like, you know, world peace, equality for all, lots of lovely things. How is it the left is taking that sort of utopia and packaging it in a way that makes me want to swallow my own face. The way some people on the left have been thinking has changed. They're looking for any kind of signal that underneath you're actually a write-off. And so one slip of language, one slip of behaviour, and that shows that you're in the bad camp and you're just suddenly excluded. So the left lack nuance, they're too reactive to criticism and morally puritanical. Anything else? Well, why don't we talk about identity politics? Yeah, let's talk about that. The goals are absolutely noble, but one of the problems of identity politics is it breaks off these groups into these silos, into these kind of knowledge silos, and it stifles the possibility of engagement between those kinds of silos. So Tim, I want the left to win. You've got a beard. You obviously want the left to win as well. What can we do to stop losing the big battles and start generating some genuine systemic change? We've got to move beyond words. We've got to get practical. We can join a political party, even better, start a new political political party. Basically, just stop being some outraged virtue signaling prats. So lefties, here's a sum up of what we need to do. And if you can ignore the offensive imagery long enough to listen to what I'm actually saying, we might not all die in an alt-right apocalypse. Stop reacting to pointless online provocateurs. Outrage is what they want, you make them look cool, and it distracts from bigger problems. Stop it with the moral purity and writing people off for making a single mistake. Try to understand the reasons behind someone's opinions and actions. And remember, calling someone a racist isn't going to unracist a racist. Get out of your bubble and off your devices. Social media is not your friend and destroys nuance. Instead, get outdoors, take up a hobby, Broaden your horizons. Oh, that's it. Strange. Excuse me, can you stop doing that? Yoga is cultural appropriation. Oh, fuck's sake. Yeah, I'm Hitler and yoga's the problem. Jesus Christ.